the Bible says he's a very present help in the time of need. Lift your hand and thank you for how he has helped you. Bless his name for his goodness, for his grace in your life. Lift your voice in thanksgiving. Pray out in the language of the Holy Ghost. We bless you this morning. We thank you. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy, what a joy we have. How we give you glory. We give you praise. You are our Ebenezer. Receive the glory, the honor, the praise, the adoration for all you have done. To you be glory this morning. In Jesus' name. Shout a good amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, let us be excited and know that in his presence there is fullness of joy. Bless the Lord, somebody. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to this morning service. Welcome to live class. Trust in the Lord to bless you this morning. And your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. We start life class to make you, with something to make you smile a little bit. During a Sunday school lesson, a child was learning about how God created human beings. The teacher was very dramatic, showing how uh, Adam was uh, made to go to sleep and Eve was created from Adam's ribs. Later in the week, the boy's mother saw him lying down on the floor. So she asked him, what was wrong? His reply, is, his reply was, Mom, I have a pain on my side. I think I'm getting a wife. This morning, I believe that God will bless you from his word. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, some Sundays now in life class, we've been teaching on commitment to service. Somebody say commitment. I like you to say it again, commitment. The beauty of Christianity is the fact that God relies on those whom he had saved with his blood to continue his work. We see Jesus when he was on earth, he told his disciples, go and make disciples of other people. Praise the Lord. He could have sent angels, but maybe you don't realize the preaching of the gospel is a mystery to angels. It's hidden from them. And only one angel had a chance to come and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And that was angel Gabriel. He took advantage, ran with the vision, came to tell the world good news to all mankind. Other than that, the gospel is a mystery to angels. One of the reasons it's a mystery to angels is because the side to angels is the side of judgment. They can't understand why, why they will preach to a person and the person will say they reject God. I mean, the angel will just track them dead straight away. So God had to use humanity to reach humanity. Praise the Lord. God had to use humans to be a blessing to other people. Also, it gives us the chance to be able to get the benefit of serving God. Serving God is beautiful. Serving God is awesome. Serving God is glorious. Commitment to service in the kingdom. You qualify from the day you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Somebody say, I qualify. It does not wait until you probably receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even though power helps you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That is an addendum, an, an addition, the power of the Holy Spirit. But the day you give your life to Christ, you should be a witness. The woman of Samaria, as she encountered Jesus, and she could see that this cannot be a human being. This must be the Messiah because he spoke as a prophet into her life. He's a seer. He saw her past. 
He told her things about herself. The woman was so blown away that she immediately became a witness. She went to bring the whole village out. Praise the Lord. So we need to realize that souls get saved because somebody spoke to them. People get to know Jesus because somebody spoke to them. People become, people get to know what the Bible says because someone spoke to them. And you must never let anyone go past you because they have a religion. Religion doesn't save, in fact, it gives false assurance. And sometimes those people don't want to investigate. They don't want to investigate what they are holding. They're even questioning the veracity of Bible. The word of God is the final authority. Serving God is a necessity. It's important. We're going to continue today by saying some of the blessings when you serve God. What happens to your life? What happens to your walk with God? What happens when I commit myself to touch other people with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? Praise God. I say I praise the Lord. I'm just going to jump straight to the number ninth blessing. I've jumped so many because I want to finish the subject today. The number ninth blessing of kingdom service. Kingdom service makes you a terror to your enemies. In other words, when you begin to pray, when you begin to serve the Lord, you become a terror to the enemy. Uh, and uh, when you are a terror... No, 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 I think they put the wrong one on the screen. See, what is kingdom service? We're talking about the blessing of Christian service number nine is that you become a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because she was a witness with God. Jesus said, Matthew 28, 19, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. In verse 19, say, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 20, he says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. So when you begin to serve God, He will stand by you, He will be with you, He will strengthen your witness and confirm it with the miraculous. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. In Exodus 23, verse 27, he said, I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come. And will make all your enemies to turn their backs to you. Until you take a step of being a witness for God, you do not enjoy the witness of his power. But when you become a witness for God, and you decide to walk by faith. You see things. I was preaching in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, during the week. I think Thursday, uh, no, no, no. Wednesday morning, that's, no, no, Tuesday, Tuesday. I started on Monday night, finished here on Sunday. And then by Monday night, I was preaching in Ivory Coast. Uh, Tuesday morning, I felt like laying hand on people to receive healing. I said, if you are here and you can't hear, very well with one ear come out, an old man comes out. He says, since birth, I've not heard with this ear. Not a pin dropped. Pow, pow, of God heals him. <laughs> His ear is open. I ask somebody to block the good ear. I go very far behind him so he won't read my lips. And everything I said, he holds the mic. I'm behind him. If I whispered amen, very far, he's able to say it. You see, if you say, oh my God, he said, deaf ear yeah, since he was born. This one is uh, serious. Of course, there is nothing Jesus cannot do. There is no mountain he cannot move. Praise the Lord. So may the power of God work in your life. May God back you up. May he make you a terror to the enemy. One of the benefits of kingdom service is that it makes you a terror to the kingdom of darkness. If you are perpetually oppressed, you need to ask yourself, why am I oppressed? Why are things happening to... Of course, there will be reaction. Whenever you come against any kingdom, the kingdom will react. But we know who will win. You will win. You will be above only. You will never be under. Because he who is with you 
is more than he that is against you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So it's our benefit when you serve God, God will make your enemies to become afraid of you. That's the truth. You see, the, 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 the reason is, somebody needs to see that the kingdom of Jesus is the kingdom of power. Praise God. It is the kingdom of power. It is the kingdom of answered prayer. We're not sending prayers to heaven like a litany or something you just needed to do. We do it because we believe there will be a good reaction. And I pray for you today. Anything you are facing, you will experience testimony. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. So remember again in serving God, kingdom service makes you a terror to kingdom of Satan, to the kingdom of darkness. Listen, the kingdom of darkness exists in our world. It is not, it is not equal to the kingdom of God because something in your head will think, ah, uh, darkness and light, they are equal enemies. No, no, Satan always wants to roar like a lion. He is not himself a lion, but he likes to roar like a lion, fooling himself. But you've got to know that they that be for us are more than they that are against us. If God be for us, who can be against us? So listen, you need to serve the Lord. Whatever way you serve the Lord, whether it is in the church, uh, in any department, or as in reaching out and winning souls. And may I tell you the key, the most important, the most powerful is soul winning. Somebody say soul winning. Never stay silent. Never assume that somebody is okay. Never give somebody a, a clean bill of health because they are nice, because they look righteous. They must be born again. Salvation is first before right living. A matter of fact, it's not right living. It's righteous living. <laughs> There's a difference between right living and righteous living. Right living is your attempt to be good. Righteous living is the righteousness of Christ applied in your heart and then giving you power to live for God. That's why Paul said, Philippians chapter 3 from verse 8 to 10, that I may be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, right living, trying to be good, trying to be nice. He said, he said that I may be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is where? From God. There are people who will tell you, I live nice, I'm okay, I don't go to church. <laughs> church is in the heart. Oh, really? You must be born again. And God will not adjust. God will not adjust it. Pastors may. They will, you see, by the time they have been held and come for their statement, you will not be there. Pope John Francis just said, I cannot believe that the righteous God will send people to hell. That is beginning to take us close. To believe, according to the book of Revelation, that he might be the false, false prophet mentioned there. How can you eradicate the Bible and say, I cannot believe that the righteous God we send people, all people to hell. I think hell must be empty by now. Oh, really? By his own thoughts. Let all men, yet he remains. That's the statement he just made. And a good number of people will now hang on that lie and think they have found that the Pope himself said it. Who is Pope? Pope is from the word Papa. How many people they call Papa today? He made that statement just recently. So if that does not empty hell. The Bible says, matter of fact, Isaiah chapter 5, I'm not sure if it's verse, verse 20. It says, hell has even opened its mouth wide. Opened its mouth wide. So listen, you, it has to be faith in Christ Jesus. Faith in Christ Jesus. That's why we must witness. We must share Christ. We must let people know. No Jesus, no life, no Jesus, no hope, no Jesus, no direction, no Jesus, no meaning to life. Be a person who serves Christ. Don't stay silent. 
don't assure your friends that they are okay. Praise God. Next one is number 10. Faithful kingdom service guarantees eternity in heaven at last. Wow. A guarantee of eternity in heaven at last. Jesus said in John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Praise God. So in other words, we know Christ, we receive him as our Lord and Savior. We become part of his kingdom, then we serve. Then we serve. Then we serve him. Serving God gives you the opportunity to touch lives, to reach people, to bring them to the kingdom of God, to help them to know Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And particularly in today's world, today's world of easy believism, where people hang on to wrong and falsehood, it is the right time to preach the word and to realize this is the only way to heaven. You know, many will say, oh, there are many ways. No. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And there is no one who made that claim out of all those people they worship that ever said they are the way. Jesus is the only way. Somebody say Jesus is the way. So kingdom service qualifies you for eternity in heaven at last. So you know him, you are part of his kingdom, and you are now part of those who are bringing people into the kingdom. But don't bring people into the kingdom with an attitude of standing like an outsider. Is somebody hearing me? In Africa, almost every country, from Ghana to Kenya to Uganda to Nigeria to Ivory Coast, everywhere, you have guys who are passenger callers. They call passengers to the bus. They fill up the bus, but they never travel with the bus. Please travel with the bus. Don't miss the ride. Don't get people into the kingdom and you are not in the kingdom. Get into the bus. Win souls, but be part of the souls that are making eternity. Shout a powerful amen. amen. Number 11. Number 11, kingdom service brings divine honor it brings divine honor you want to see honor in your life you want to see blessing in your life you want to see the grace of god in your life the verse we read earlier john chapter 12 verse 26 says if anyone serves me let him follow me and where i am there my servant will be also if anyone serves me him my father will honor there is honor in serving God. There is celebration in serving God. The day, I mean, the Bible talks of the crowns that will be given to those who were soul winners, those who served God. You, you know, heaven, heaven is going to be interesting. There are those who will show up and they, they just managed to make it there, but they have no reward. Or at least they made it to heaven. Then there will be those you look overlooked, but they were addicted soul winners committed to re reaching people for christ some even overdo it's better to overdo than underdo many years ago about 42 years ago 41 used to come to england on holiday and shopping before coming to Libya 40 years ago i'm not sure if it was the year i came to shop for our wedding that must be then 43 or 44 years ago and uh there used to be this man at Stratford tube station. Every year you came, you met him there. Morning, noon, and night, he's giving out tracts, he's witnessing. So I decided to go to their church. I'm a pastor. It was Elim Pentecostal Church, Ilford. I think they now call it Gates, Gateway. So I received a tract from the man. I said, I'll come to your church tomorrow. I'm a Christian. I came to their church on Sunday morning. No, Sunday evening. When we were making altar call, he came to me and said, you want to go forward? I said, I'm born again. He said, yeah, you still go forward. I said, I'm a pastor. This guy is an addicted soul. <laughs> he, was, he didn't want to assume that you are born again. He needed to be sure 
Praise God. It's like Catherine Kuhlman, the woman who moved in the miraculous all of her life. Even when you invited her to a pastor's conference, she would still make altar call. In case you are here, and you think you are born again because you are a preacher, you need to be sure, come to the altar. Catherine Kuhlman never assumed. Tell your neighbor, don't assume. Yes. The founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley, had a master's degree in theology, was pastor of an Anglican uh, church, and yet was not born again. He wasn't born again. He had a master's from Oxford. But had a parish he was pastoring, and he wasn't born again. Went to preach in America. On his way back in a ship, he met Count Zinzendorf from, from I think it is, uh, I think it's Switzerland. Yeah, the man is Swiss. And Count Zinzendorf was a hardcore born-again believer. Even if you wore four colors, he still preached to you. So he preached to John Wesley, prayed for John Wesley. John Wesley received Christ. John Wesley comes back. First Sunday, he preaches the power of God, hit the church. The people fell under the anointing, and the Anglican church kicked him out. So that's how he went to start the Methodist church, because the previous revelation always opposes the next revelation. Always opposes. So you need to be a witness. Tell your neighbor, be a witness. Look at someone else, tell them, don't stay silent. One of the benefits of kingdom service is honor. May you be honored. May you be blessed. May your life carry the grace of God, the power of God, the hand of God. When you serve God faithfully, God provokes men and women to honor you anywhere you go. May that be your portion. The day will come when the people you have served, the people you have blessed, will meet you and say, you have blessed me. You have touched my life. You have been a blessing to me. You have helped me to become what I have become. May that be your portion. I get that all the time. All the time. I get that all the time because you have served. I was in the plane. I had to do some crazy journeys in order to leave Abidjan to be in Lagos. Same, they had to stop in Lome, Togo for three hours overlay. Uh, even there again, I had to quickly preach in the church, uh, ICC by the airport. But in the plane, a man looks at me and said, you must be past Matthew. I said, yes, I was trying to disguise. It wasn't working. The air host, I thought it was a French plane. They shouldn't recognize me. Air host recognizes me. And this passenger who's going from Sierra Leone to another place, connectivity in Africa is, uh, God bless them. He said, oh, you have helped me to be in the faith, to stand in the faith. And I'm thinking, we don't even have a branch in Sierra Leone yet. But you see, the word of God goes forth. So may God bless you. May God use you. There's a way you will serve God. Heaven will decorate your life with honor. So much that people will begin to envy you. i like someone to shout, I receive on that. People will envy the grace of God, envy the blessing of God, envy the favor of God, envy the hand of God on your life in the name of Jesus. You will not be an embarrassment. And you will not be ashamed. Your children will serve the Lord. Your children will honor God. Your children will bow at the feet of Jesus. They will receive Jesus Christ as their savior. Not only your children, your work will be blessed of God. Because you've chosen to serve the Lord, may angels attend to you. Somebody shout, I receive. Say it again, I receive. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's look at number 12. What is the blessing of serving in the kingdom of God? Whether it's an usher, soul winning, peacekeeper, traffic, wherever you serve the Lord. The 12th blessing is that kingdom service qualifies you to receive crowns in heaven. I think I mentioned this before. You see, the scripture made very clear that Christian service is not in vain. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. So I say on that day. Can you see how the day there is in uh, upper caps? It tells you it's a specific day. There are three days. Day of man, day of God, and day of Jesus Christ. On that day when God is blessing people. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Praise the Lord. So listen. Listen, there is a reward in serving God. And when you look at it truly, you see, and like I always say, churches in the United Kingdom or all around the world may register with the Charities Commission. They are not charity per se. They are the body of Christ. They needed the registration for legality. Amen? For legal purposes, to fulfill legal grounds for operation the church when you stand and serve in church it's not the same as red cross when you stand and serve or winning souls or you are the one helping to drive the bus it is not the same as serving uh, there are all kinds of uh, charities in the united kingdom greenpeace uh, service for humanity etc 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 there's so many everyone is finding one nowadays but the body of Christ serving Jesus Christ has eternal consequences oh glory oh glory and that's the reason you find people becoming martyrs for Christ what is a martyr a person who dies for the sake of the gospel m-a-r-t-y-r-s they die for the sake of the gospel in the book of Revelation, the Bible mentions, it says, you have a word that you were slaughtered because of this message. There are people who have died. There are people who have been places and the natives have reacted to them. Went to the whole crusade in Ikorodu, Igbo, Nigeria. And we were told that in 1846, in the town now called Igbo, that the first missionaries who came from the United Kingdom, about four or six of them, the natives, obviously, motivated by demonic power, slaughtered all the guys, killed all of them. Interesting enough, it has resulted in some kind of backwardness for the town. So that even though it's next door to a town that is blossoming and burgeoning with industries, that part is dead. It's just beginning to rise. Because listen, what you permit determines what you receive. They've struggled. That's why their king and the pastors there were excited that they were, we were coming. They said, you don't know how you have answered our prayer. The stadium is in there. And even the stadium was abandoned by the state for 10 years. It was on account of our crusade that the stadium was completed. The town came up. The town came alive. It was put back on the map because of the hand of God. So I pray for you. Darkness will not prevail over you. You will receive a crown of righteousness. Your service will not be in vain. Some say not in vain. No, 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 no. Even look at it. I love, the, I love Paul in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He was even talking just about the resurrection. He said, if there's no resurrection, then all these things we are doing is in vain. Then our prayer is in vain. Our waiting is in vain. Our suffering is in vain. He said, but our, the resurrection of Christ is real then the crown of righteousness is real. It's the only reason one will stretch himself in serving and touching lives and helping people so that we will not be ashamed that he's appearing. I say you will not be ashamed that he's appearing. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. There is a crown awaiting believers. There is a reward awaiting them. So when they make it to eternity. There is a reason to celebrate. Glory to God. I said praise the Lord. Remember again our service is not for wanting something to do. It is also not charity. It is kingdom. It is eternal. What you are doing has eternal consequences. Glory to God. Number 13. Kingdom service guarantees favor in your life. The Bible says you will arise and have mercy on Zion. 
For the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. For your servants. Oh, I love this. Can you see now? We always stop in verse 13. But we don't realize that you cannot take the Bible out of context. When you take the Bible out of context, it becomes a pretext. When it becomes a pretext, it is a pretense. So you've got to read the Bible in the whole ramification. For her servants take pleasure. You didn't take pleasure in her stones. How will you receive favor? You didn't serve. People want the favor without the serving. They just want to come and pick and choose what they can. You know, everybody will quote from Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon from the fashion against me. And every mouth that rages against me. What does the remaining of that verse say? This is the heritage of the servants of God. Not for everyone. In my country, unbelievers know that verse. You see anything? They have fashion. You have back to send her. They know how to quote scripture, but they don't know the latter part. It says it's the heritage of the servants of God. The heritage of those who serve the Lord. Praise God. So you can't take the heritage of the believer and give a person who is not a believer, who doesn't want to serve the Lord. So listen again. God said there is a level of favor that comes on the believer who serves him. One of the benefits of kingdom service is divine favor. What is favor? Favor is when God gives you something you don't qualify for. When God gives you something you did not work for. Favor is when God pleasures you more than somebody else. And favor is not always fair. Say with me, favor is not fair. Say it louder, favor is not fair. The Bible will say, Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. What, do you, what are you going to do about it? He hated Esau. He loved Jacob. What are you going to do about it? That's favor. Praise the Lord. And you find sometimes you also, even in your heart, you favored people. And the other side reacted. But when I came, you did not do that for me. And you had to look for excuse to cover up. But inside your heart, your something is telling you that you know why you did it. I favor this person. May you be favored. Favor is not just a name of a person. You know, some people bear the name favor. It is a, it's an experience. It's a grace. It's a power. It's what you get when you serve God. May you get it. Again, I said, may you get it. May you be the favored of the Lord. May you be the favor of the Lord. Thank God for your labor, but one day of favor, Mayaresh, Rikaporo, is worth more than your lifetime of labor. Next, next. Uh, thank God for your labor, but one day of favor. It's worth more than your lifetime of labor. Do you know in one day, just one day, one phone call can change your story. One opportunity, one connection, one breakthrough, one favor, one, one meeting, one connecting with a person, one connecting with the power of God, and your story changes. So as you serve the Lord, may you be favored. I'd like you to lift your hand and say, I shall be favored. Say like you mean it, I shall be favored. Kingdom service makes you a custodian. Number 14. Number 14. Custodian of the mysteries of God. The mystery of his power. Someone say mysteries. What is mysteries? Mysteries, mysterion in the Bible means deep things of God. Deep things. Today mysteries mean things you cannot unravel. In 1611, when the Bible was translated, mysteries meant deep things of God. Deep things of God. In other words, there are deep things about praying in tongues. There are deep things about how God blesses. There are deep things about revelation. There are deep things about how God speaks. There are deep things about, about how God will give you victory. It is that access to the mystery of God that made one 17-year-old boy to be able to carry out what kings and other soldiers could not carry out. Who was that? David. David. He had, he'd been walking with God. 
He had an understanding of the mysteries of God. He had, he had been taken to heaven sometimes. That's why he would say, how lovely is your dwelling place, almighty God. He was not imagining it. He was taken there. Mystery. He had had encounters with God. He saw Jesus and he saw the Father. And he saw the Father telling Jesus, sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So he had, he had had mysteries. He had, he, he, had, he had seen God. He had understood God. You know, you see, his dad didn't like him. And his mom was never there. And his seven brothers, oh my God, they did not like him. Because they could sense that he carried an unusual grace. Sometimes people who don't like you, it's not because you are handsome or ugly. It is because of what you carry. And they know you will outshine them. Some people will embrace you for it. Some people will dislike you because of destiny. And that's why you need to be careful. Don't carry your destiny to those who will tear it down. Some will come into your life acting like they came to embrace, enlighten, encourage your destiny, but they are there to destroy. I pray that God will open your eyes and you will know destiny destroyers. So David at 17, he knew what Older people couldn't know because of his walk with God. Since dad and mom were not there for him and his brothers, he would always stay with the sheep. And while they are worshiping God, God was making himself known. Because you discover God more in his presence. For the Bible says in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. David oftentimes will be in his presence. That's why one time he said, I would rather be a doorkeeper at your house. Glory to God. So may God expose himself to you. So kingdom service brings you into the mysteries. In Mark 4, 11, and he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. Divine revelation is the heritage of the servants of God. When you have revelation in an area, look at me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you, you have to, you have to humble yourself not to be arrogant because you can just see it clearly. You can just see it clearly. It just, it just, it's just amazing to you because you have a revelation there. So we say revelation. For example, if a person has revelation in the area of wealth, God showed him that, look, because you are in Christ, even if they planted you in the most difficult place, part of the world, uh, where shall we pick now? Haiti, where there is trouble right now, and hooligans have taken over a nation. Jesus, man, hooligans, taking over a nation. That is another level of demonic activity. Even if you were planted there and you have revelation, you can sell sand and prosper. Because you are not operating by, 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 by the mind of man. You are operating by apocalypsis. A revelation given to you. Something God has shown you. Praise God. So when you serve the Lord, you enjoy mysteries. When you serve God, you become a qualified to know the secrets of God, ah, yeah, tolerable. The Bible says that God showed his general way to the children of Israel, but his, his secrets, whom did he show it to? Moses. What Moses knew, they did not know. Moses was the only one invited and shown how the world was created and he had to write everything. This God is too much. Too much. So I pray may you be brought into the secrets of God. Into the secrets of blessing. God has many secrets and they are forever hidden from the general public. He showed his acts to the children of Israel. But his ways he revealed to Moses. So the children of Israel they saw the acts. Oh my God a mountain full of smoke. And they were mesmerized. They didn't even want to leave. If they climbed that mountain. And saw the back of God that Moses saw. What would they do? They only saw smoke. And didn't want to move. Moses saw more than that. 
He saw the move of God, the grace of God, the hand of God. So when you serve the Lord, God brings you closer. Amen? No matter how difficult a person is, do you realize there are people who are close to them? No matter how terrible a dictator is, I'm sure you know there must be a few dictators on earth. Uh, hey, really? I didn't know he's one. No, let's go out of a uh, democratic system. Let's go to like North Korea. In North Korea, you eat when they tell you to eat. You stand when they tell you to stand. They, they, they determine what you wear, where you eat, where you live, who you marry. Jesus, man. Everybody must clap at the same time. Suppose I don't want to clap. You know, the camera is going all over to see who did not clap. So they just come. Why did you not clap? If you, <laughs> you know, ask my grandchildren, why did you do that? Because I want to. You don't do that in North Korea. <laughs> but do you know as hard as that guy is, there will be somebody close to him who is open to. Same thing with God. When you serve the Lord and you desire God and you pursue his presence, he will make his way known to you. That's why sometimes when you move by the wisdom and the access you have to the Holy Spirit, it will confuse some people. Don't let them negotiate you out of revelation that God gave you. Somebody shout a powerful amen to that. Because sometimes God will show you things. He will speak to you. He will make his way known to you. He will show you things. He will show you where he's taking you. Where he's taking your business. Where he's taking your life. Somebody did not receive it. Don't listen. Close your ears. Only find the multitude of counsel that will truly guide you. Not the ones who are in the first place. Even jealous or scared of where God is taking you. And I pray for you today. Where God is taking you, you will get there. I say you will get there. So God has many secrets and they are forever hidden from general public. From general public. That's why whenever you receive a revelation, the person who doesn't have the revelation, one, he doubts you, two, he fights you, three, he's, he's actually abusing you all over the place and sometimes they go as far as calling you a heretic until the day comes when they come to an understanding of what you have received. Got a text from Canada this morning or yesterday. I didn't read it, so I saw it this morning. Person said, ah, "Sir, could you send me a copy of that your book, Tongues of Fire?" Uh, I'm in the midst of people who are doubting speaking in tongues. I had one the same person when they chose the theological school they were going to. Now that is a school that officially teaches that there is no speaking in tongues because they are still following what somebody believed 200 years ago. Revelation is consistent, but if you are not accessible to it, you will doubt it. May you be blessed. Did you receive something this morning? I said, did you receive something this morning? Let's close this. I can't finish even. Number 15 says, kingdom sir. I think I'll teach this one. Kingdom service brings blessings on your children. Oh, wow. Ayabata, kerosha parerosa, rikabados. You cannot serve God and not provoke generational blessing. Go and announce to the righteous. It shall be well with him. The Bible says, Proverbs 13, 22, that not only will you be blessed, it will be upon your household. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. So kingdom service will bring blessing favor on your household in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus glory to God I said glory to God so today you have received the word may the word prosper in your life may it favor you on every side may it bring you into the fullness of all that God has for you may you walk in the grace of God walk in the blessing of God walk in the power of God favor when you wake up favor when you lie down Favor in the morning, favor at noon, favor in the evening, grace upon grace. And as you serve God, you will not be put to shame. Rather, you will experience testimony. You will experience grace upon grace. 
blessing upon blessing i pray for each one who is in this service today that the passion to serve the lord will come upon you you will be a witness you will share christ look at me as i pray for you today i also declare and as you become a witness for christ telling people about jesus you shall not be disappointed the hand of god will be on your life the grace of god will be on your life the blessing of the lord will be on your life doors will open for you favor will rest on you grace will rest on you testimony will follow you you will be the evidence of what god can do so shall it be this week as we are ending the month of march i declare to your life even this last week doors will open for you testimonies will follow you as you open your mouth to be a witness god will back you with evidence he will back you with evidence he will back you with evidence he will back you with evidence the evidence of the goodness of god will be seen in your life the evidence of the blessing of god will be seen in your life the evidence of the grace of god will be seen in your life you'll be a testimony so shall it be i declare again so shall it be in the name of jesus if you were blessed this morning give the lord praise <laughs> hallelujah amen 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 you may be seated in the presence of the lord you may be seated in the presence of the lord uh, glory to god i said glory to the lord so this morning we want to serve god with that which he has provided for us you see there's something about seed sowing god wants you to be a sower god wants you to learn the power of seed sowing in other words god wants you to not just be part of the kingdom part of our service is to realize that we are in the kingdom somebody say i'm in the kingdom say it louder i'm in the kingdom and look at me the kingdom of the world don't joke the united kingdom don't joke you don't pay tax and you made the money and there is evidence that you you made the money it has gone from civil uh, uh, offense now to criminal and i need to warn some of you who carry dual passports who have monies abroad in your name and you did not declare it in the united kingdom that the central banking system knows you have that money they know in case you don't know that they know so you better tell the truth see la because the central banking system just means if England Revenue decides to investigate you in the UK, they'll just look for anywhere in the world where you have money. And the thing will show up on their system. And they'll present it before you. So you need to be honest. But the kingdom of God doesn't even need to do that. God sees all things. And he wants to bless you. So he wants you to be a sower. Tell your neighbor to be a sower. The first thing is, if you are a sower, don't be a scarecrow. Make sure you do what is righteous what is right regardless of what is going on around you don't don't sow the seed and you and you're wondering what happened to my seed i've sown this seed uh, and you are reacting oh god i have not even seen any blessing no 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 just be the seed sower not the scarecrow don't say uh, uh, oh uh, i've not seen any breakthrough sow the seed jesus explained that some of the sower seed were eaten up by birds let the bird eat but the one that will bear fruit fruit will follow you blessing will follow you shout a powerful amen. amen the second thing when you are sowing seed look at me there may be a seed that didn't bring forth fruit don't worry jesus told the parable of the sower the man sowed in how many grounds four grounds which how many ground brought good seed one out of four that is 25 percent and yet that one that brought exceeded the one that was lost today i speak into your life every place you've sown seed result will follow you testimony will follow you in jesus name look at me don't let one bad ground somewhere that made your seed to die make you stop seed sowing if that's so i say oh my god birds have eaten the seed i sowed 
I'm not sowing anymore. You will have no harvest. You will have no harvest. You can scare away the birds, but your harvest will still come. Praise God. There are some, there are some, there are some situations you have a scarecrow cannot stop. You've heard me say several times, I had a rice farm. 100 acres rice farm in Africa. We made scarecrow. After a while, the birds studied the scarecrow. This thing is not a human being. You know, when the wind blows and the scarecrow does this, the birds will go. Later, they began to see that this human being is not moving away from one spot. They even began to land on the scarecrow. <laughs> land on the head of the scarecrow, the shoulder. It's not your duty to be watching the seed. It is his duty to prosper it. Your seed will not die. Prosperity will follow your seed. Shout amen with power. Glory to God. You know, like I said, when we plant those seeds, we were too worried. Then if scarecrow did not work, then we hired some boys that had a gong. They'll be eating the gong all over. Boom, 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 boom. How many places will you be in 100 acres? As you go that way eating, the bird comes this way. But the one that will bring your harvest will bring your harvest. That's why those birds, for every 50 kilo we sold, we've harvested times 11. Times 11. Worst was times 10. Harvest will follow you. Another time we thought, okay, let's put smoke. Then, so those, the boys we hired will put smoke in different places, thinking the smoke will get in the eyes of the birds. The birds. When hunger comes, you will endure anything. The birds endure the smoke. They will eat. Listen, we still had our harvest. This morning, harvest is coming. Amen. It will exceed your expectation. This is going to be one of the best years you ever lived. Amen. Shout amen powerfully. Amen. Let's give our seed this morning. Let's bring our tithe. Let's bring our offerings. Let's bring our various givings. Let's give with excitement. Let's give magnifying the Lord from the bottom of our heart. Let's give. Let's give. <laughs>